And hello everyone and welcome to Amazon. This is Dennis. I am Tan Staffel the Paleo Gamer, and today we are playing the first game by renowned adventure game designer Benoit Sokal. Now, you may not recognize that name right off, but you probably recognize some of his adventures. Um, you've probably heard of a game called Siberia. It's routinely in a top ten list of all um, adventure games of all time. Well, Amazon here was his first game. This was released way back in 1999. And it's um, it's a very interesting game. It has a lot of elements that will show up in his later work. In fact, the Amazon itself is referenced in Siberia. You can find a book in a library in Siberia that talks about the particular journey we're about to experience here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get this started because there's kind of a long cutscene coming up. Um, one of the more interesting things about Sokal's designs is that you're not going to see a lot of really difficult puzzles. You're not going to be doing mathematical analysis or pattern matching or anything like that. His games are mostly about exploration and characters and story. Basically everything you do you can find just by walking around and finding things and trying things. So in that sense it's going to be a lot different from the last few we've looked at but anyway as soon as the mailman here gets to the top of the hill we will get our story underway and start our expedition to the Amazon. you are the journalist aren't you i gave him your letter the other day he's probably read it he received another letter this morning i put it in his mailbox it was a letter from the museum uh, Letters from the museum, they always mean trouble. Maybe you could take it to him. He has trouble moving around, you know. He's an old man. Well, you see what I mean. If you want my advice, you should see a doctor. Well, that's what I think. Well, yeah, no one asks you what you think. Okay, where did you go? You were right here. You were right here five seconds ago, and you weren't pedaling that fast. Okay. Well, we're here somewhere on the coast of France, actually. There is a lighthouse up ahead. Um, there's a little telescope over here. We can look at the lighthouse if we like. And that's about it. I mean, we can see some birds flying off. Of, oops, we can see some birds flying off into the distance, but that's about all we can do here. It's just the first interactive thing we do. Um, now for a... oh, here's the letter we were talking about. We may as well look at it. Um, the letter is basically from the Natural History Museum in Paris, and it basically says that they are turning down Monsieur Valembois's request for a new expedition. Apparently he led an expedition back in 1936, which was bitter disappointment and mockery, or res resulted in bitter disappointment and mockery. And the museum feels that he has a habit of undertaking adventures which have adventurous fantasies surplanting strict scientific rigor. So basically they think, don't think much of Monsieur Valembois. But we're a journalist, we're apparently here to talk to him for some reason. There's an old lighthouse, that's a little bit different. Um, go inside. And let's go upstairs and take Monsieur Valembois his letter. And this is him over here. And let's have a little talk. Hello, Monsieur. You are the journalist, aren't you? Amazon? 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 Too late for me? <coughs> Too late. It's all over for me. I am no longer in good health, my friend. It's a pity, but what can I do? It... <coughs> in any case, Amazon, all that. No one ever believed me, so... <coughs> After all those years, it's incredible. The egg. The egg. The egg. It's still alive. Alive. Yes. 
had planned to take it back over there to Amazon. My expedition was ready, had it all planned out down to the smallest detail. But now, it's all over. I have no strength left. <coughs> I have no strength left. You must go for me. You must go. Take the egg back. Take the egg of the white birds back to Amazon. I beg you, please. <coughs> And it appears that Monsieur Villembois has now passed away. But his dying request was that we take the eggs of the white birds back to the Amazon. Which we actually have no idea what that's all about at this point. And he is saying Amazon, not Amazon, even though they're obviously supposed to be relative to each other. So let's see if we can figure out what in the world it is that we're supposed to be doing. And why does that clock have no hands on it? Okay, that is bothering me far more than it should. All right, um, let's start by looking in this drawer over here. We have some paperwork in here. Over here, there is some expedition things and a picture of a woman who is obviously important to Monsieur Valenbois. Her name is um, Yukamani. Yukamani, and this picture was taken in 1933. So. Um, I said earlier the game came out in 1999. The game is actually set, apparently, in 1999. He has a picture of his lighthouse up here. Um, there's nothing else we can do down here. There is a telephone over here. We can use it to call the museum and hear them mock Valenbois some more. There's not much point in doing that. We also have up here, this is his office, I guess. There is a journal here. This journal is the record of his expedition to the Amazon in 1933 through 1936. And we can go up this ladder here. And there's this tiny little loft up here with a desk. And on the desk is this letter. It's also a stuffed alligator for some reason, but whatever. It's a desk up on the little edge like this. All right. Now we have all these letters and we have different things. We have this journal which goes into a lot of detail about his um, expedition. We're going to be looking at this later on because it's got some information we're going to be needing. And we have this letter which is basically his last request to us. And there's a lot of information here so let me see if I can summarize it. In 1933, um, Alexander Valenbois, with two friends, a priest named Father David Mikowski and a law student named Antonio Alvarez, went on an expedition. They went off to a place called the Amazon, which is apparently somewhere in South America. When they were in the Amazon, they made a lot of interesting scientific discoveries of things that had not been seen anymore. They went to the village called Puebla. And while they were there, they befriended some of the native tribesmen there. One of the people they met was a woman named Yakamuni. And Yakamani um, fell in love with Valenbois, and he fell in love with her. They became lovers and became very important to one another. But while they were there, he witnessed a strange ceremony involving a very large white egg, which a child of the village brought in. And he found out that this white egg was the egg of these great white birds that lived in the area. And these birds were had almost mystical importance, or mythical importance, to the natives of the area. And they, um, the birds only ever produced one egg per generation, and all of the birds from that generation would hatch from this one egg. Well, he thought this was um, interesting. I noticed I picked up something. And um, so he decided he wanted to, this was what he would need to bring back with him to make his um, mark on the scientific world. So he followed the um, same journey the child had taken and went to this great volcano and he found, a, found an egg and he left Yukamani behind, he left his friends behind, and he brought the egg back to civilization so that they could um, see this great discovery he had made. 
and that door is locked. And anyway, the problems started thereafter. The his friend um, Antonio Alvarez became a dictator. He took over the country and he became a dictator and he became determined to modernize it and bring it into a world of logic and rationality. So he tried to stamp out all the native beliefs and religions and mythology, including the story of the white birds. And Father Makowitz did the same thing. He was trying to teach him the ways of the Catholic Church and again trying to stamp out their native religions. And this has apparently caused a great deal of suffering and hardship in the Amazon. And he now believes that the only way he can do penance and repay the great wrong he did, which he caused by taking the um, white egg away, is to return it to the Amazon so that the white birds can once again fly. Because, as I said, the egg only ever hatches, all the birds from a generation hatch from a single egg, and he has it. So all the white birds are currently gone unless he brings it back. Well, if you notice while I've been talking, I've um, gone down into this tunnel system under the lighthouse, and I hit a locked door. In order to unlock the door, I'm going to have to start solving the puzzles of the game. Now, this first puzzle, I just have to turn this power on, this power on. I can turn the computer on, and pick up this disc. And here we are looking at the... There we go. Here we are looking at the Hydroflot operating system. And trust me, this computer is ancient even by 1999 standards. Put the disk in. And it asks for a password. Well, we don't know what the password is, but it's six digits in pairs of two, and it's all numeric. Well, let's look at our journal and see what we can do. Well, the first thing we hear, or see here, is that Alexander Valenbois was born on the 28th of June in 1904. That's six digits in pairs of two, 280604. So, there's a good chance that that's our password. So, we want to go to 280604. Think about that for a minute. Tell us to authenticate, and we're good. And for the record, that is a three and a half inch floppy disk. That is what we used to store data on back in the distant past of the late 20th century, back when dinosaurs ruled the earth. And we heard a door open. So that door down here is open. And I have to ask one thing about Alexander Valenbaugh. He's apparently an anthropologist. Before I go any further, there's a metal rod on the floor here that we're going to stop and pick up before we get into this elevator. This guy's an anthropologist. He lives in an he lives in a lighthouse. He has this network of tunnels and locked doors and computers underneath his house. He has an underground hangar. Is this guy a anthropologist, or is he a James Bond supervillain? That's what I really want to know. All right. There's some railroad tracks here. We're going to cross these. Um, this thing over here is called the Hydrofloat. Now, the Hydrofloat is one of my favorite vehicles from Adventure Gaming. We'll see why in a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to go into this room. And we're going to look at this diagram. Now, remember, we're supposed to take an egg back to the, hy to the Amazon. Now, this is the door we came in, the one I had to use that computer to open. We came down this elevator and obviously came out here. There's the stairs we came out and the railroad track we crossed. But there's obviously a, another floor up above it with a tunnel that leads to, oh look, an egg. So, we just need to find a way to get to this floor. And we're going to do that in a minute. In the meantime, Let's go this way a little bit and do a little more exploring down here. Oh, there's a rat. Uh, he's got a rat problem. There's a can of gasoline. Well, I'm sure we won't need that. In the meantime, let's go hop on board the Amazon, the um, Hydroflot. See, I love the Hydroflot. It's such a great little vehicle. And we're going to want to put our floppy disk into this thing and load it. 
And this will tell us our status and tell us everything we need to be doing right now. Now you see the Hydroflot has lots of different modes. It can be a plane, it can be a sailboat, it can be a submarine, it can be a boat, it can be a grapnel, okay, or a helicopter. Now most of these are not available right now. In fact, the only one that is available right now is plane. But when I do this, it says I'm okay on fuel, but I have no details and no egg. And then for details, it wants a three-digit number. Well, we don't know what it wants yet, so let's do a bit more exploring to find that out. And what I'm going to do is walk all the way down this tunnel. Now when I get to the end, there's another side tunnel here. And let's go up. Now that didn't actually move me, that just closed the door. I actually have to get closer and look at the push the up button. Now what we have out here is another telescope, similar to the one we found before. Now, we need to start looking at the journal. What the journal will tell me is that he first became aware of the Amazon because of the Amazon goose. And that Akowitz and Alvarez watched the geese fly off towards the Amazon, so that's the direction they're flying in. Now he built the hydrofloat that we just were exploring to follow the geese. Now, there's one thing here. Notice that the geese are flying this way. But he apparently wants to fly this way, to this little atoll here. That's a five degree shift. We just need to be aware of that. And this thing uses a disk and was built in 1933. What kind of computers did they have in 1933? It is a mystery. All right, there's some geese flying, and they're flying in direction 140. Now, remember, I just looked and said we have to add 5 to that, so we have to go in a direction 145. That's some... Um, obviously the direction. Well, that's what we need to put in for the details. Now, why they call it details and not direction is... Well, your guess is as good as mine. Alright. And that's a long time to control that. Okay. Now we have the details, now we need to go get the egg. I can put the, enter the details in now, but I don't, don't need to. Um, the egg we know is at that halfway point on this elevator. Now, let's take the elevator back to the top for now. See, I can even turn around, and there's no way to stop the elevator along the way. There's, I'm not in control. So I have to find a way to stop the elevator mid travel. Well the way I can do that is if you notice there's a little hole right here on the floor. See right there? If I take this metal rod that was conveniently lying right outside the elevator and shove it in there, now when I try to go down, see it blocks the elevator from going further down and lets me stop in the middle. Well there's no exit here. Or is there? Notice there's a different set of brickwork. I take the sledgehammer that I picked up in the entryway. Um, I think I pointed that out earlier. I can, I can break them through to the other side. And I feel like I should have shouted, Oh yeah, as I did that. Alright. And here we have the egg. It's been sitting in this little shaft of sunlight on what looks like a Mars rover or something. Over here, there's a thermometer showing it's at about 30 or... what is that? Uh, is that 10 degrees? I can't tell. Um, so it looks like about 10 degrees. Thermometer's backwards. Huh. Okay. But we're going to assume the egg is still viable and safe, because he told us it was. So let's pull this little lever and send the egg on its way. And you know that, for something that's as valuable as that egg, I'm not sure I'd trust gravity to take it to where I needed it to go, but that's just me. Alright. Let's make our way back to the elevator. Now, we're going to have to send the elevator up, remove the rod, 
and then send it back down. Okay, we now have the egg and the directions. We just need to get them both into the hydroflow. Now, the egg is right there. We need to get it in there. So, we have to use that crane to do it. Now, that's not really a puzzle. It's just a case of finding the crane controls of this ladder that's kind of in the back here. I pull this lever. Everything happens automatically at this point. And I do have to comment, some of these cutscenes are not that bad, especially for static elements. Now, like I said, this game came out in 1999. It is running at 640 by 480, and I'm having to upscale it to 1920 by 1080. It's on my monitor, and that's what the capture is going at. And for the record, I had a very hard time finding a piece of software that would uh, capture this. Uh, the one I'm actually using is Open Broadcaster Software, which I have never used before. But neither Fraps nor um, NVIDIA Shadowplay can grab it. So, way to go, OBS. Um, just a shout out there. They're open source, they'll appreciate it. Um, anyway, what I was saying is that the cutscenes, as long as the there isn't a lot of motion. They actually seem to upscale pretty well. They look pretty sharp. Of course, as soon as anything moves, it goes to all jaggies and muddy textures, but still not bad for... Um, oh, the disc is already in there. Not bad for this, um, you know, for a 15-year-old game. Anyway, we want to be a plane. Fuel is okay. Details are wrong. We now have the egg. I just need the details. Now remember that it's 140 plus 5 or 145. I want to confirm that's where I want to go. And we are off. W3FH mode. What does that mean? I'm serious. What does that mean? I have no idea. This guy has a hidden hangar with a launch ramp under his lighthouse. He's definitely a James Bond supervillain. And a rocket-assisted takeoff! Yes! I think I'll build one of these in Thermal Space Program. I love the Hydra plug. Anyway, we are now off and on our way to the Amazon. Following a flock of Amazon geese. Yes, it's a nice, relaxing drive, isn't it? Our flight, isn't it? I guess we'll just continue happily on our way to Amazon. And, and you know, I guess this journalist is really into fulfilling the last request of a dying man, because um, why else would I be dropped everything I'm doing to do this? And we're out of gas. I knew we should have picked up that other gas can. I just knew that. No, the game wouldn't let me. You had to run out of gas, didn't you? Fortunately, we can just glide to a stop here within sight of land. Okay. Here we are just outside of this atoll. That's actually not bad, because that's the atoll that we saw in the journal earlier. Uh, well, we can't function as a plane anymore because we have no fuel. But, sailing doesn't require fuel. So let's see if we can sail in. Again, I love the Hydroflot. It's just the most versatile thing you've ever seen. For a minute there, I thought it was going to start flapping its wings. Now what's weird is you will sail maybe 20 feet and then stop, which kind of raises the question, why did we even bother? What's actually happening here is that there is a shipwreck in the entrance to the atoll that we have to get past. Well, if we can't go through past the shipwreck, let's try going under the shipwreck. 
The submarine doesn't use fuel. Presumably it's a battery power or something. Maximum depth, 20 atmospheres. Not bad. And there's a whale. Somebody alert Kirk and Spock. We found one. Okay. Just a little shortcut scene there. And here we go. Underwater. Bye bye, whale, and sail through it. Oh, great job breaking it, hero. Gee, as if there wasn't enough problems. Oh well, we're inside here. Okay, let's go see where we are in this little atoll. And there is the world's most blasé fisherman because he didn't even blink when we surfaced next to it. Let's see what he has to say. No, the fish aren't biting! How do you expect them to bite, for Christ's sake? First of all, sperm whales don't usually come into this lagoon. <laughs> and then all the rackets you've kicked up. You certainly frighten the fish off. Hey, hey, there's a whale trap down below. He must have been caught in the old nets near the wreck. So as long as it's there, the fish will not bite, that's for sure. And I'll be in a bad mood. And when I'm in a bad mood, I don't feel like talking. Well, you just did a lot of talking for someone who's don't feel like talking and if there's no fish biting, why are you still there fishing? You know, it has a lot more to do with that bottle next to you, doesn't it? Okay. Well, look, there's a bar here. And this proves we're on the right track, because the bar actually appears in the journal. You see, after they follow, use the hydrofloat to follow the geese, they found Shipwreck Island, which had whales in it. How about that? And there's a bar. Now... This is a necessary stop. We need fuel for the hydrofloat. So, I guess we had to stop here anyway. Why you couldn't have let me carry that extra thing of fuel with me? And you know, we could have avoided this, but whatever. See what in here? Oh look, they have draft. I wonder what kind of beer they have here. Ah, okay. Um, we're going to take this diving helmet, which is lying here. And somebody's been playing darts with a knife. We're going to take that. So, Casablanca poster. Uh, beer can picture. There's nothing else in here. No one else in here. Is there anyone on this island besides that fisherman over there? Oh well. I'm going to go down this way for now. And we're just going to wander down to this building. Oh look, there's a gas pump. Too bad it's over here and the hydrofloat is over there. Can we sail over here? I mean, we have the sail mode. No? Okay. Let's see if there's anything in here that will help us. Well, there's a plane, but it looks like it's missing an engine, and... Oh, look! A gas can. Let's take that. And back here in the back, we're going to pick up a wrench, because you never know when those may come in handy. The plane's got a wing missing, too. Alright. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and fill up my gas can so I can put gas in my hydrofloat. And that doesn't look like a lot of gas. Um, no wonder we ran out of gas so fast. Now, we apparently need the fisherman's help, because we're not going to have to ask him some questions here. And to do that, he says the whale that is trapped on the bottom of the lagoon is keeping the fish from biting. So we're going to have to get down to the bottom of the lagoon. We're going to start by turning on this windmill. And, like I said, there the puzzles in so-called games are not necessarily that difficult. In this one, you basically just do everything that seems obvious until you solve it. Because, like, I have to go over here and just turn this crank to engage the wheel. That's all. Then I can attach the helmet to the end of this hose here and try to start it. And see nothing happen. The reason is, this is a pump, and right now it's pumping water. You see that pipe going down into the water there? Well, we need it to pump air, so we're gonna take the end of their pipe off. Oop. Um, I hope they didn't need that for anything. Now we're gonna start it again. 
you can hear it still pumping in the background. So now I can take the diving helmet and go underwater. And I can hear a whale. There's the broken piece of pipe I just dropped from up there. Where were they pumping salt water to? Okay, there's the whale. It's trapped under the netting here. So let's free the whale. He's tied down right here. Use the knife and cut him free. You're free, Willie! You're free! Oh, you're welcome. Seriously. Oh, you'll thank this guy, but not me. Okay, tell you what, will you clear that wreck out of the entrance to the lagoon so I can leave? Would you mind doing that for me? Then we be square, right? I free you, you free me? Well, screw you, whale. Okay. Well, I may as well get in some wreck diving while I'm down here. I don't have enough wreck dive hours lately. Oh, look, there's a World War II plane fighter, it looks like. See, I always thought the Amazon was South America, I guess from the name. But that looks like a World War II bomber or something. What's over here? Oh, look! It's an old Hydra float. I bet that's theirs from 1933. Too bad I can't get into it. Oh, well. We've freed the whale, so probably the fisherman can fish again. So maybe he'll just give us some more information about what's going on. So let's go talk to him again. Yeah. yeah, it's coming back to me now. It happened a long time ago. 1932-33, maybe. There were three of them. They had a machine just like yours, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, they never managed to restart it. <laughs> they eventually left on a freighter that was passing through. Their machine remained in the lagoon for some time. And then, with time, it sank. They also left a chest behind somewhere. Look! Look, here's the key. So you just randomly carried a key around for 60 years for a chest. Okay. So obviously they didn't leave by Hydrofloat. They left by a freighter, he said. Where are they getting TV from? Um, well, we need to find that chest. Now, it's obviously not in there, because we've already been there. There's nothing over there, so we need to go looking around and find this chest. And this is as far as we went before, so let's see what's on around the island. Sure are a lot of shipwrecks here. There, there. So, that's another World War II. It's like a bomber. What is it doing? Okay. If that's a World War II bomber, and this is 1999... Why are there still furrows from where this thing crashed? Shouldn't that have long since eroded away? I mean, this thing has decayed that much. <sighs> Whatever, just another mystery. And is that the black pearl over there? I'm going on. Let's go through this little passage here. And, oh look, there's a small run-down hut over here. And there's a chest. Let's see what's in it. Another disc. Okay, has that disc been here since 1932? What kind of disc were they, or computer were they using in 1932? Who knows? Well, we do have a picture on the wall here of Valenbois, Mikowski, and Alvarez. And I'm sorry, Alvarez, with that mustache and that hairstyle, there was no way you were not going to be a dictator. Yeah, 1932. Yeah, he was going to be a dictator. He was kind of genetically fated to be. All right, so we have the disc, and we have the um, have a new disc. So let's go put this in our hydrofloat and see what we need to do. Get back on board and load our new disc. Alright, now one thing here before we get started. We could try to take off as a plane, 
But if you notice, it's kind of a small harbor. We saw that other plane that had skidded under the out of the lagoon, under the sand. So we probably can't take off as a plane. We can't go as a boat, a submarine, or sailing because we're um, because there's no way out. That wreck is blocking the entrance to the um, lagoon. So let's try helicopter. It says we're out of fuel. We have no details, and um, but we still have the egg because I haven't fueled this up yet. We put the fuel in over here. There we go. And the fuel can vanishes, so you can't go get any more. But it also says we need details. Well, the old number we had, the one, the 145 that we used before, doesn't work anymore. Because we're now in a different place. This was a stop along the way. This wasn't our destination. But, if they had planned to leave in the old hydrofloat, maybe that old hydrofloat has the coordinates we need to follow to get there. So we need to look at it. But the old hydrofloat... See, we're okay for this. The old hydrofloat is stuck on the bottom of the ocean. Maybe I can pull it to the surface, or at least get into it. So I use the grapple. And I fired that rope directly across his fishing line. And he did not even flinch. He's not out here fishing. He's out here drinking. He's just using the fishing as an excuse. Let's go see where we've got our... Let's go see where we've got the grapple stuff. So there's the grapple. Okay, now it's attached to the old hydrofloat. There's actually a little bit more you can wander around down here so you can go look at other wrecks and that sort of thing. This would be a... This place existed in reality. It would be a great uh, wreck diving place. She needs more fish now. I guess he's fished all up the way. All right. Pull the grapple back up and see if we can recover that old hydroplane. Or not. We just tore the side of it off. Okay. If the hydroplane won't come to us, we'll go to the hydroplane. We'll go diving one more time. And here we are. Go forward to the boat, turn right, go forward to the hydrofloat, go inside. And yeah, it looks a lot like the current hydrofloat. And you know, I could have crawled in through that, really. You know. All right. Looks exactly like the one we have now, except it's got a, a mechanical display instead of a CRT. Two two seven. That is obviously where we need to go. So we have our last numbers there. Which is back that way. Plane, turn back to the left, go back to shore. All right. All I have to do now is enter the numbers. We need to play helicopter. Oops. We need to play helicopter. Fuel is okay. Details are wrong. Egg is okay. We need to go 227. Confirm that. And we're ready to go. And this has been going on for about 30 or 40 minutes now, so I think we're going to call this a stopping point or the end of Chapter 2. When we come back, we will make our way all the way to the Amazon. So let's go ahead and take off in helicopter mode. And in the meantime, this is Dennis. This is Tan Stout with a Paleo Gamer. And I will see you next time when we arrive in the Amazon in our quest to return the egg of the white bird. I will see you there.